hello students now we will start with the new unit quantum physics before we begin <coughs> with class uh, qu quantum physics let us talk about limitations of classical physics what is classical physics which is based on newton's laws of motion what are newton's laws of motion if you remember or what is classical physics classical physics is based on the particle nature of matter uh, like the physical quantities position momentum energy all these things um, can be perfectly found out by applying with these newton's laws of motion like uh, p is equal to mv e is equal to half mv square like all these uh, nothing uh, at rest will leave its state of rest and unless and until some unbalanced force is applied onto it these all the newton's laws of motion s is equal to ut plus half at square all we these physics we have studied in our school days and this works perfectly we can find out the momentum we can find out the if some train is moving some uh, with some speed so after some time amount of time uh, what will be the location of this moving train what will be the momentum of a moving car what will be the energy all these things can be perfectly found out with applying uh, uh, with all these uh, newton's laws so what is the need of this quantum physics then what is this need of quantum physics when we can do perfectly all things with this newtonian physics yes limitations are there what are these limitations error in newton's laws error in these uh, newton's laws this is observed error in newton's laws is observed when it is observed not at the speed what we uh, come across this daily life or our general problems this error comes when especially when speed approaches velocity of light when speed approaches velocity of light so all these newton's laws of motion what we have talked about all these newton's uh, formulae formulae which are based on newton's laws uh, they are working perfectly but error in these newton's laws is observed when the speed is approaching velocity of light so what did einstein say einstein said that this what was the cause of these error in newton's laws einstein said that this error is there the error in the laws is there it because it is based on newton's newtonian physics or classical physics is based on the assumption that an absolute frame of reference absolute frame of reference exists in the universe and every physical quantity it can be position momentum energy all these physical quantities can be measured absolutely which is actually not true what did einstein say ki there is absolute measurement of physical quantities is not possible what is the meaning of this so when we are talking about position of some point or something the position of something what we are saying it is left to me or it is right to me this is upside or downside 
or uh, when we are talking about uh, speed of the moving train right so if we are standing stationary on the railway platform and a train is moving in some direction with the speed of say 40 km per hour so we will say that the speed of the train is 40 km per hour but what is the speed of the same train if we are sitting in some other train which is moving in the same direction of that earlier train and the, our train is moving with a 20 km per hour and the first train is if this train is moving with a 40 km per hour and we are observer say we are observer we are sitting in this train which is moving with the speed of 20 km per hour so for this observer what is the speed of the train that this speed of this train it becomes 20 km per hour right so the first when we are stationary when we are stationary observer is stationary the speed of this train becomes 40 km per hour and now in this second situation where we are sitting in this train which is moving with 20 km per hour the speed of the same train becomes 20 km per hour now if we are sitting in this other train which is moving with the same speed 20 km per hour but in the opposite direction of this first train so the speed of this same train now becomes 40 plus 20 that is equal to 60 km per hour so the speed of the same train becomes different when we are stationary the speed is 40 km per hour when the observer is sitting in some train moving with 20 km per hour in the same direction the speed becomes 20 km per hour if the observer is sitting in the other train which is moving with the same speed in the opposite direction the speed becomes different what is the meaning of this what is the actual absolute speed of the train is it 40 km per hour if the uh, is the earth stationary right so what is the meaning nothing is perfectly at rest in the universe so 40 km per hour also cannot be said that it is the absolute speed of the train right 40 km per hour also cannot be the absolute speed of the train because this is the this is what einstein said ki absolute measurement has no meaning what is the meaning absolute measurement has no meaning what did einstein say ki absolute measurement has no meaning the measurement is possible relative to each other the absolute measurement absolute measurement has no meaning relative measurement is possible relative measurement of physical quantities is possible so the absolute measurement has no meaning there is nothing like absolute frame of reference in existence there is nothing like absolute frame of reference does not exist so this was the cause in error of newtons in the newtons laws which was observed when the speed approaches velocity of light uh, the cause is the assumption that absolute frame of reference exists right so what did einstein say only the relative measurements are possible 
like in uh, mathematics uh, you might have come across the measurements in uh, different uh, frames of reference so the, you are co uh, converting the coordinates from one frame of reference to other so what we are doing we are doing these measurements relative to some frame of reference we are talking about some frame of reference position can be relative only it is left to me right to me right absolute position has no meaning so every physical quantity time is also not absolute time physical quantity which is also not absolute time does not run with the uniform speeds in the different frames of reference isn't it so why don't we observe this difference in time in our day to day life we don't observe this so when uh, the time running uh, when uh, which related to some satellite which is moving uh, with some speed of uh, light approaching with the speed of light and the time for us in our routine life it, it is time is, is running with the different speeds why don't we observe this difference in the speed for us in daily routine life because our speeds are not comparable to velocity of light isn't it when we i say that time is also not absolute time doesn't run with the uniform speed we don't observe this difference in time do we observe this difference in our wrist watches for one you of your friend who is uh, in some uh, train and uh, for us no we don't observe this difference because our speeds are very less so this error is uh, be it becomes prominent this error is significant when the speed of this body it is approaching velocity of light so the point is absolute measurement has no meaning huh? so this is the limitation on classical physics right the second point there are many of the phenomena there are many of the phenomena which are happening at quantum scale which are happening at us uh, okay the phenomena which are happening at atomic or molecular level the phenomena which are happening at atomic or molecular level they are not following classical physics what is the meaning of this the phenomena which are observed at atomic or molecular level they sometimes it happens like we it is not expected the phenomena is not expected if we are not able to explain the phenomena uh, with the classical physics classically which is not possible and we uh, observe that yes it is happening in at atomic or molecular level so classical physics is not able to observe uh, explain these of phenomena which are happening at atomic or molecular level so to explain the phenomena to explain phenomena happening at atomic or molecular level we need quantum physics right so this because classical physics cannot explain these of phenomena which are happening at atomic or molecular level so what is the meaning of this classical physics has limitations it is not able to explain the phenomena which are happening at the smaller scale also it fails to the error in these laws is obtained when the speed is approaching uh, up velocity of light so to explain uh, these things where classical physics fails we will go to quantum physics and hence the need of quantum physics we are familiar with this duality of radiation what is duality of radiation is dual nature of light dual nature of light 
we are familiar no uh, we have accepted this dual nature of radiation what is this dual what is meant by this dual nature um, firstly we start with uh, the uh, say wave nature of light wave nature what is this wave nature of light light waves are electromagnetic waves right R light travel in the form of waves and this wave nature it is uh, with the help of this wave nature we are able to explain the phenomena related to light uh, interference diffraction polarization this phenomena can be very well explained with this wave nature of light but when it comes to compton effect black body radiation this wave nature is not able to explain these of phenomena so in this case photoelectric effect it can be so in this case what is required particle nature of radiation is required particle nature planck's quantum theory right particle nature of radiation is required so we are using this particle nature of radiation to explain the phenomena of compton effect or black body radiation or photoelectric effect what is the meaning of this we have accepted that this phenomena cannot be explained with wave nature and hence we are going to duality of radiation so we accept that sometimes light behaves as a wave whereas some other times it behaves like a beam of particles we accepted this saying that at a time it will exhibit only one nature at a time it will not exhibit both the natures simultaneously isn't it so we called this behavior of radiation as duality of radiation we accepted it and now we are familiar with it because why we accepted this because we want to explain the phenomena which are happening we want to understand and explain the phenomena what are happening we have accepted this duality of radiation and now the same thing we we need to apply to matter so duality of radiation we have studied now the time is to study duality of matter it was d broglie firstly it was d broglie who said that universe is composed of two things everything in the universe it is radiation or matter the in the universe or the universe is composed of these two things radiation and matter and nature loves symmetry nature loves symmetry many of the natural things are symmetric in nature it can be human body it can be leaves of the trees a nature loves a symmetry if a nature loves a symmetry if a nature is universe nature is composed of two things radiation and matter and if radiation has dual nature then the simple law of symmetry suggests us that radi uh, matter should also have matter should so have dual nature isn't it so it was de broglie who firstly said that matter should also have it have dual nature so we are familiar with the particle nature of matter we are familiar with the particle nature of matter like uh, the matter is composed of uh, atoms um, molecules atoms atoms are further com composed of neut uh, neutrons protons electrons all these are small particles 
electrons, protons, right, neutrons, all these are particles. Matter is composed of particles. This is particle nature of matter, what we are familiar with, what we are familiar with. And now, what is, uh, what De Broglie said, ki this matter should also have the wave nature, like radiation has the wave nature and particle nature, matter should also have the wave nature as well as particle nature. So that is why it's time to study now wave nature of matter. We have studied, we are familiar with, we have, we are familiar with particle nature of matter and now it's time to study wave nature of matter. It's time to begin with the wave nature of matter. What is uh, this de Broglie hypothesis? De Broglie said that every moving particle, every moving particle of mass m and velocity v has a wave associated with it. This wave is called as de Broglie wave or matter wave. The wavelength of this de Broglie wave or matter wave is given by lambda equal to h upon mv or it is h upon p where what is p? p is the momentum mv it is momentum of the moving particle what is h h is planck's constant 